Well, good morning. You may be wondering, what do you got on your head? Well, let me tell you, my wife was so nice at Christmas. She made me a nice toque for my Christmas present. And I'm just finding it's pretty cold out there. And in our front porch, well, I need to keep a little bit warmer. So I'm dressing warm and using my wonderful wife's Christmas gift to keep me warm. So I hope you like it. Pretty nice, eh? <laughs> well, welcome to another Discipleship Empowerment Word. We're glad to uh, be with you, and I know for some of you it's minus 33 or more. Well, I hope you try to keep warm today because everything out there will freeze quickly. I know a lot of you on the other side of the world are wondering, how cold does it get over there? Well, it gets so cold that we can drive trucks and transport trucks and cars and walk on ice and everything else. That's how cold it gets over here. And so we're in a little bit of a cold snap. But we don't, just because it's cold outside, we don't have to worry about being cold inside because we've got the Lord Jesus Christ to warm us up today and his word to strengthen us. Well, in our Discipleship Empowerment Word Study, we've been looking at the word confidence. And I wanted just to talk about this, just uh, as an opening a little bit again, just to remind us that confidence, as we look at the definition, is to be sure, to believe strongly, uh, to be firm in one's thinking, to have faith that knows it's true, having a foundation that is steadfast and unmovable. And the reason why I want to remind us of that, because I want to tell you also that confidence does not stop challenges. Confidence does not stop hardships. But confidence gives us the ability to go through those valleys, hardships and things. And so, you know, people say, well, if I just have world confidence, then I will succeed. Probably not. If I have self-confidence, and I saw something on the internet yesterday, and I would be questioning whether that was biblical or not, because it says, oh, if you just have self-confidence, you're able to do all kinds of things. No, the reality is the only strong confidence that can bring you peace is the confidence that we have in our mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what we need to have is God confidence. Not confidence in what we can do. I mean, God gives us wisdom. God gives us ability. But also God wants us to trust in Him. When, and when you look at uh, Moses, and when you look at uh, Joshua, God had to give... I mean, Joshua was a tremendous, powerful soldier. And, uh, I mean, in his fighting skills, he had confidence. But remember, God had to come to Joshua the night before they crossed over and then also again before battle to remind him that his confidence shouldn't be in himself or in his army or in the people of Israel. His confidence needed to be in the Lord and he needed to stand in him. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so when we talk about this idea of confidence, I just wanted to remind you that confidence, just say I, just because I can boldly say I have confidence in Jesus Christ, that doesn't mean that, that you're not going to go have challenges and you're not going to go through different things that are going to be of hardships. You know, we just need to trust in the Lord that He, that He will carry us through. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's a little bit different perspective, this whole idea of confidence. You know, sometimes people feel if we just claim this type of thing, then there is going to be no other problems. Everything will be fine. No, our confidence is in Christ. And the purpose of that confidence is that as a definition is that we are able to stand firm in Him as we go through trials and tribulations, as we go through hardships, as we go through sufferings. And all those things will still happen, but we have confidence that God will carry us through. Amen. And I think that I, I felt that was important to share that this morning because I, I, you know, the scripture wants us to have a balance on how we look at various words. And just because of sometimes we think, oh, I can if I just rise up and and just say it enough times and, and claim it enough times, it will happen. No, what we can rise up and claim is Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is King. 
and we are wanting to walk according to His will. And when we do those things, we then have confidence that He is able to carry us through. Amen? So as we look into, now we're into the book of Galatians. As I said, the word confidence is not used a lot in the Bible because maybe uh, back in the olden times, maybe they knew that they were just supposed to have confidence in the Lord. It wasn't a half in and half out. They had to either trust God or not trust God. But uh, Paul here tells the Galatians church about his confidence. And I think that's what we need to hear is what is Paul saying that he has confidence? He says, I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. Now you know that the, the enemy was trying to sneak in and change the gospel, change what the gospel of Jesus Christ means. And, but Paul was saying to him, I have confidence in you because you are in the Lord. See, that's where the confidence comes. He has confidence in them because they are searching and walking in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that they have this clear in their mind, that the gospel is clear. So he goes on, so he says, well, whoever is troubling you, <laughs> I have confidence also that God is going to deal with that too. And that's the thing that we have to sometimes remember that when we're facing hardships and trials and we're going through struggles, we need to have confidence that God is seeing all things. You know, I, Colwyn and I often talk in the morning just before we sometimes speak here. And she was telling me this morning, again, how the, the Christians are struggling in, in, uh, in Myanmar. You know, they're being persecuted. They're being... Uh, uh, in a sense, uh, hauled away. Matter of fact, one of our, she was just mentioning one of our Bible school graduates uh, who happens to be a lawyer, you know, was picked up yesterday and hauled off to jail. And, uh, you know, she's one of our graduates, but I know her well enough that I know that her confidence is not in her, her ability or in the law that she has learned or in her government. Her confidence is in Jesus Christ. And to those of my friends in Myanmar, your confidence today needs to be in Jesus Christ. Not in the governments, not in what you can do as, as your own strength, but it needs to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here they have confidence. They meet every day for prayer. They meet every, matter of fact, three not every times three times a day, Colwyn is saying for okay. prayer. And so because they know that what's going on in their country, they cannot have confidence in the politician or confidence in the military. The only place they can have confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, unite with them in confidence that our God, who carries us through, will also carry them through. And so around the world, we got believers who are suffering and going through struggles, but we need to pray. We need to pray that as they go through these valleys, that they're going to have confidence, like Paul was saying to the Galatian church. I know you've been tested. I know you're struggling with the gospel. I know you're kind of up and down in some of these areas. But he says, I have confidence in you because you are in the Lord and the Lord is in you. And so that's what I think we need to remember today and that we need to grab a hold of, of, of when Paul talks to, to the churches, even though he's trying to correct them, he has confidence that in what he's sharing, they will uh, uh, grab onto and they will continue to move forward in. And that's what we need to do. We need to ask, where is our confidence? Is our confidence in the things that we've obtained or our confidence in the things that we have done? Is our confidence in the, the governments or, or the societies that are around us? No, our confidence is, needs to be clearly planted and rooted in Jesus Christ so that when the winds and the waves come, we will not fall. And so my brothers and sisters, I, I know in Myanmar, uh, they've been cutting your internet off and on and, and sometimes you can hear and sometimes you can't. I just want to encourage my brothers and sisters in Myanmar, my Ketchin brothers and sisters in Myanmar, right now, make sure your confidence 
is in the Lord Jesus Christ. As you pray, and I know you do this because I know you're a powerful prayer people, that, that, that during prayer you continue to focus on Jesus Christ and His ability, His strength, His power, His authority. And I know that you will have the confidence that He is able to carry you through this. Now you might say, well, you know, it's been a challenge. You know, I want to let you know, some of our brothers and sisters over there have been facing this for 60 years. 60 years. Not 60 days. Uh, maybe now six days. But 60 years. And you know what? Let me tell you. Because their confidence in the Lord. Because of their confidence in Jesus Christ. Their church, the Ketchin Church and other churches in Myanmar is growing. And getting stronger. Because when you have nowhere else to turn but to Jesus Christ and receive his confidence and his strength, then that begins to be a testimony to others. And so, you know, the church of Jesus Christ is growing. When there's persecution and challenges, you know, people rise up and say, okay, my confidence is not in myself. My confidence is not in the world, but my confidence is in Jesus Christ. And we need to make that declaration. Here is another t-shirt we can wear and put on the old front. My confidence is in Jesus Christ and in Him only. Amen? Give me a thumbs up for that. <laughs> well, in Ephesians chapter 3.12, he goes on. And Paul is talking to the church here, again, about this whole area of confidence. Because he says in 3.12, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence. Through faith in Him. So He's talking to the church, you know, the reason you can do what you do and the reason you can have boldness in what you do is because you have confidence and access by faith to Jesus Christ. That's where it's all about now. I have confidence that I can go into the Holy of Holies and not be struck, struck dead. But I have confidence that when I have on the righteousness of Jesus Christ, I can enter into the Holy of Holies, right into the very presence of God. I have confidence we can do that because of faith. Because that's what he's saying here. Paul is telling us, according to the eternal purpose, verse 11, he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, the Father, according to the eternal purpose, accomplished what? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. What did he accomplish? He accomplished in whom? So that we could have boldness. That's what he accomplished. So that we could have boldness of faith. And also that we could have access with confidence through faith in him. Access to the very presence of God. That's the beauty of being able to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Our boldness doesn't come through ourselves. Our confidence does not come through ourselves. But it comes through Him who lives in us. For Him who was an overcomer who lives in us. Amen. That's where our confidence is. Not in the things of this world. Not in the things that we're able to do, but in Jesus Christ. Then in Philippians chapter 1, so Paul is talking to the Galatian church, he's talking to the Ephesian church, and now he's talking to the Philippians church. In Philippians chapter 1, 25, he, he, he goes on and he's talking to him about how he was hard-pressed and how the challenges he went through. He says, Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you and being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all of your progress and joy of faith. So Paul was saying, you know, and sometimes he says this in other places, you know, that he'd rather just be home with the Lord. But he knew that his God had a purpose and a calling for him. And he was confident that God was going to carry it out. And he was telling the Philippian church that he was confident that not only was God carrying it out, and that God, that he would see them again, but his joy was in the, how that Philippian church walked, how they gave, how they loved the Lord. And he was confident that not, you know, that someday he will be able to see them again and uh, be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. See, again, this whole area of confidence is tied to the word boldness. And, and the idea of boldness comes because we have confidence in Jesus Christ. And that he can carry us through and that he will be with us. Amen. 
And so I just wanted to drive that home today. Because as we go over, and, and again in Philippians 3, 4, he tells them here in Philippians 3, 4, he says, Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And so he's saying, you know, some people have confidence in the flesh, but Paul says, I go on beyond that. He had confidence that, yes, in the flesh he was able to do certain things. And you said, well, you just don't want to trust in that. No, but I mean, people, the God has done things in your life. And you know what you can do and what you can't do. And then you need to move on further into boldness. But Because that's what Paul is saying. If anyone thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. So they were people were walking around and saying, Oh, how great a preacher I am. How great a teacher I am. Look at me. Look at me. And Paul says, you know, I, if you want to measure that between what you're doing and what I'm doing, I have confidence that my flesh is just as strong as your flesh. But then he goes on and he tells them, but my confidence is not there. My confidence in what Jesus Christ has done in me, how he has called me, not only to, the, to my brothers and sisters, but he has called me to the Gentiles. And because of that calling, he had confidence. He had confidence, and, and he, he had to have confidence. Think about all what Paul went through. That's why he said open and confidence does not stop challenges and hardships, but it helps us to go through and Paul went through lots of challenges and hardships but he keeps writing the church but I have confidence in you and I have confidence in him then over in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 4 he says but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one verse 4 and we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. So it goes on actually in verse 5. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. So he was saying again to the Thessalonian church, we have confidence. We have confidence that as the Lord has directed, as the Lord has been working in your life concerning you, that you will be able to do and to carry out his will. I have confidence. I have confidence that God will carry us through. Amen. Hebrews 3.14. We have here where it says, For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. So he tells Again, the Hebrew writer tells the people who are reading, we have confidence because we've started off our journey with Christ Jesus. We are partakers with him. We are grafted in with him. And because of that, we can have confidence. And that confidence in Christ, what does it do? It makes us steadfast. It makes us strong. Not in ourselves or in our abilities, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are steadfast in Christ because our confidence is in Christ. Hebrews 10.35, he uses the word confidence again where he sums up, Therefore, he says, and reminding him, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. What are you trying to say? Your confidence in Jesus Christ. Don't cast it away. You know, don't become like some of those who are backsliders, who have fallen away, who are who have given up. Don't cast it away. Continue to have confidence. No matter what goes on, you say, well, what about sickness? Continue to have confidence. What about financial troubles? But continue to have confidence. What about heartaches? Continue to have confidence. What about persecution? Continue to have confidence. Continue to have confidence. Continue to have confidence. This is not a broken record, but it should be. Continue to have confidence. Okay, that you are a partaker in Christ. Continue to have that confidence. And that's what he was exhorting the church. Therefore, have confidence. Have confidence in the Lord that he is able to carry you through. Don't cast your confidence away. Don't cast it away. 
rise up. Rise up, O man and woman of God. Rise up, rise up, rise up. And how do you rise up? Because you have confidence in Jesus Christ. Oh, I just pray today it's like a well. I'm just, you know, pressing the old handle of the well and saying, come on now, people, rise up, rise up, rise up. Put your confidence back in Jesus. Don't put your confidence back into the news or into the government or everyone else. Rise up and realize that your confidence is in Jesus Christ. No matter what you may be facing today, you know, you may be listening to me from the hospital, you may be listening to me from the jails, wherever you may be listening from, that these, these afflictions and these heartaches and stuff that you may be facing are only temporal. They're, they're there because of the world. But if you move your confidence from the world and from the injustices of the world and move it into Jesus Christ, you will be able to rise up above whatever they may do to you physically. Because your confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, First John 2.28, John is going to say something about confidence too. Where he says, and now, and I like this, and he says, and now, little children, abide in him. So be connected to him. Remember we know in John 15, he talks about abiding in the vine. He says, and now, little children, abide in him that when he appears we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You know, so when he appears, we're not going to just step back and say, oh, you know, I sort of trusted you for a while, but I don't trust you now. No, we, when we, he appears, we're going to be able to stand up and say, see, I knew he was coming. See, I knew he was going to meet us. See, I knew he was preparing a kingdom. I knew that he was going to fulfill his words. And I had confidence in him. And that's what John was trying to say. When you go through these struggles and trials and heartaches and that, and the persecutions and things, there is an end coming to this. When Jesus Christ will return for his church and continue to hang on to the confidence that has been established in you right from the very beginning. Well, in John chapter 3, or sorry, 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse 21, John talks about this again. He says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. So here he's, he's saying, okay, you know, when you have your quiet in time and when you're listening to the Lord, if your heart does not condemn you, that means you have confessed your sin, you have, you have got rid of you know, brought before your iniquities and your and your transgressions and your sins before the Lord. He has washed you and cleansed you. You're covered in His righteousness. And He's saying, if your heart does not condemn you, then you have confidence towards God. I believe that's why we can have Holy Ghost boldness. Because when we have the, 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 the vessel clean, and Jesus says, when you're clean and you come before the Lord, ask, according to the Father's will, and it shall be done. I, that's why I've seen, when, we, when we've stepped out as missionaries and different things, and we know it's God's will, that's when great confidence comes. You know, I, I've, over the years, if there's anything that I've had to learn a lot more, was how to hear the will of God, and know that when I've heard the will of God, that I needed to be able to carry out the will of God, and He gives me confidence to do it. Oh, that doesn't mean I don't shake in the wind sometimes, and the winds and the waves, and then kind of wonder, oh, what's happening? But you know, a lot of times when those winds and waves and that come, my house doesn't get destroyed, but my house stands strong on the rock of Jesus Christ. And that's what John is trying to say, is that your confidence, your confidence towards God is there because your heart is right before God. Well, our last verse is found today in 1 John 5.14. And it's actually the last time that, that at least in my uh, studies, that the word confidence is being used. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, he says, as he sums up, as, as John the Apostle is summing up, to the people he is writing. He has just 
wrote to them about love. He's wrote to them about believing. He's wrote to them about standing strong and firm in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now he's saying, when he starts off with the word now, which means to sum up, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So we have this abiding relationship. We have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That when we have that and we get into him and he allow him to get into us and begin to understand and get a hold of his will for our life and for the life of maybe the church that we're pastoring or the community that we're in, that when we have, when we are at that place, we now can have confidence that God is going to be with us. You know, sometimes I talk about David's song and I want to share about it. You know, a number of weeks ago, I put in an order for 50,000 of those booklets. And I got some sideways look at me sometimes from different, you want 50,000? And I said, you know, I have confidence. And Colwyn and I said, you know, we have confidence that throughout this year, that God has got a place for every one of those seeds. And it's interesting that as we ordered 50,000 of them, and as we had to wait two weeks to get them because of printing, and now they're in our garage. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's a hundred boxes in our garage or more. But we had confidence that because God called it into being, God has been walking along step by step. Yes, there's still been challenges and there's been still been problems that we've had to face. But we believe and have confidence that God's got something in mind here and that they will go out. Well, we just received them last week. And according to our paperwork, there is already 22,000 of them going out and you get to the place that you think about well we thought we'd have enough for the year but maybe we just have enough for the month or two who knows but we have confidence because as you watch what Jesus Christ is doing you watch and listen to how he speaks into your life and you see what he's doing that brings about boldness and confidence and that he is able to carry you through. Not to be foolish, not to be doing stupid things, but when you get lined up to the abiding will of Jesus Christ for your life, for your church, for the ministry that he has given you, you can have confidence that God is going to carry you through. Do you believe that? You may not have a job, you may not be healthy, you may be going through all kinds of valleys and hardships and challenge. Have confidence, he will carry you through. Have confidence, he will carry you through. He is able, and we just have to trust him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you how the word exhorts us to have confidence in you to believe in you and not to waver or to fall down or, or whatever, but Lord, to rise up in the Holy Ghost boldness and strength and to be able to stand against the things of this world, the things against our own flesh. And Lord, that we do not have confidence in the things of this world or in our own flesh, but we have confidence in you and Jesus as we pray. And we want to especially pray for our brothers and sisters in Myanmar. Lord, as they are having to now decide, where is their confidence? Lord, as they rise up and they begin to protest, as they begin to go out into the streets and, and uh, Lord, begin to be a testimony for you. Oh God, give them confidence that what you are doing, you're going to use them to furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That even though some may end up in prison, some may end up in, in, in heartache, some may even uh, be persecuted and killed. But Lord, they have confidence in you. They have confidence that you're going to carry them through. And I pray, O oh God, 
for the North American church, Lord God, that we would get to the place that we also would rise up, not in our boldness, but in your boldness, that we would rise up in Lord God and walk in the grace righteousness of who you are, that we would enter into the Holy of Holies with prayer and Lord God, that we would then receive your boldness and be able to know that we have access, Lord, to the place that will give us confidence, and that is the access to your heart. And Lord, that when we're connected to you, you're connected to us, and we can have confidence that you are able to carry us through. And we give you thanks now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Rise up and walk in the confidence of our Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen. We love you. And Lord willing, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.